Hello, my sewing friends. My name is Jen, and I want to show you my sewing room. In the month of July, I was not sewing. No. Would I rather have been sewing? Oh, yes. What was I doing? I was building stuff. Would I rather not have been building stuff? Oh, yes. So, I built a coffee table because I knew what I wanted and I knew I could do it for far less than I could buy one. I did that last summer. I decided then I never wanted to do any woodworking ever again. No, thank you, I will buy whatever I need. Well, I decided to move my sewing room. Oh, great idea, right? Let's take back the bedroom it was in back over there and put it in the bonus room. Now this bonus room is open to everything in the living room. So whatever would happen in there, the noise would come out here. So the first thing that had to happen was let's get a door for that open doorway. Okay, great idea. Let's just put a door on. Well, how about if we did a barn door? I've been wanting to do a barn door for a long time. It's not that hard. You just take the door, you hang it on the rails, you install the rails, and then you hang it and it's great. It works great. The husband was totally on board for this. He said, let's just get a door. We'll, we'll try and get it to match the other doors in the house. They're all six panel white doors. Great idea. Yeah, really great idea. Okay, except that this doorway is exactly the width where all of the doors stop. Like they don't come any wider than that unless you want to special order one. Yeah. Well, for a barn door, you need a couple of inches or at least one inch on either side of the door that's bigger than the opening because you want to cover the doorway. Well, the doors were going to be a bazillion dollars. And once again, I knew what I wanted and I knew that I didn't want to spend a bazillion dollars. So the option was spend the bazillion dollars or build a door. More woodworking. Did I get this jean from my dad or my grandfather or even my grand great grandfather? All of whom were carpenters. No, I didn't get that jean and they're not around <laughs> to help me. So, oh boy, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube and talking to people and reading stuff and so in the end I had to build a door which I did. The other thing about the door is that we were going to paint it white and uh, decided that yeah it would probably blend with the other doors in the house but it's a big door and it's like obvious and it's kind of like it's big thing that everybody would see. How about we make it a statement piece? So it's stained and painted to look like driftwood, which is something that matches my coffee table. So that's why it looks like it does. That's the one thing I did know how to do. You know, my family will tell you she can do anything. She can do anything. Can I do anything? Oh no, no. I'm just not afraid to try anything. Obviously I had tried woodworking, said never again, and then I built a door. So, you know, my husband also said recently, well, you know, if we put a barn door to cover the closet in the room, yeah, you could just build a door. I said, you build the door. I'm not building the door. You know what? I'll probably end up building a door. Anyway, this beautiful door had to happen first. So that's the story of the door. I have some footage of building the door that I will put into another video in case you're interested. And so that's the door. The room is soundproof now and it's perfect. Oh, it combines my two loves, books and sewing. So let's have a look inside and I will give you a tour. So let's go into this fabulous room of mine. Hear how quiet that door is? Isn't that great? Well, the first thing that was very important to me was lighting. And so a friend of mine put in some recessed lights for me. And I am telling you what, I think you can see this room from space at night. 
beautiful new fan and this table. Oh, I'll tell you about that last. To my immediate left is an ironing board and my pegboard. The ironing board was a find I hadn't counted on and I got it at Goodwill for just 10 bucks. It has one of those rests at the end and also this little shelf. And under it, I have my pressing tools in the wicker basket. And that is um, spray starch that I just made, I DIY'd it. Uh, three buckets, one over there. And they all have, um, uh, well, this one's got some thread spools in the bottom, but they're mostly full of fabric that I've pulled out and matched to a pattern that I want to make in the future. This neon pink thing is actually a, a planter, I think, that I got for a dollar and a half at Walmart recently. I know it doesn't match at all, but you know what? It'll work as a trash can. And then the box is my scrap bin and I'm tired of going into the kitchen to get water to refill my irons so I went ahead and just um, brought a jug of water in here and then I have two irons actually this is my old one this was my new one and it's an Oliso and it has annoyed me for the last time so I have it there to use but I've been using my old Sunbeam because the shot of steam on this thing I am highly unhappy with. So anyway, very first apron I ever made and a mask that I made when I was in design school. Um, my pegboard has just thread, my raiders, <laughs> a license plate cover, um, and my scissors mainly. Um, it does have some cups here that have little uh, notion-y kind of things in them, snaps and needles and that sort of thing, but um, primarily it's scissors and thread. So um, I have a lot of scissors because my parents bought a farm that was owned by hoarders and they had a lot of scissors. Who knows why? Over here are my bookcases. These are not expensive even though they look fantastic. I got them at Costco years ago and they are beautiful and I love them. And I made some room over here uh, these last three shelves on the end, I have my Singer 99, a little shelf for projects that are in process, and then just some rulers. This is a very flexible space, actually, these last two shelves. I don't know what I'll end up using them for in the end, but for right now, that's what I've got. This is my cart that I keep next to my machines and my old trash can. That thing has been around for, I don't even know how long. The cart is one of those rolling carts. I got it at Michael's for, I don't know, a song. I think it was about 20 bucks back on Black Friday. And it's not the perfect color, but I can always spray paint it later as I decide that I want to do another project. Um, it's just full of things that I like to keep next to my sewing machine. Things like Measuring tools, marking tools, tape, needles, machine needles, bobbins, you know, the assorted things that you need. And then there's other stuff underneath, just I won't even go into it, but on the wall I have one of the very first patterns I ever made all by my lonesome. And some cross stitch I did a long time ago. This is my table with my machines. I wanted a table that was big enough to hold my three machines that I use on a regular basis, and they are my FAF. 7570, my Singer Quantum Stylus 9960, oh very fancy, and my brother Serger. And I want you to know that none of these machines are especially fancy, except for maybe the FAF, because it's 30 years old. I got it about 30 years ago, but it does embroidery. And um, it's not elaborate embroidery, but it's what I need. And I love that machine because it's such a workhorse. My chair has some uh, things that I need to pay attention to, um, which I'll talk to you about in another video. Uh, the table I got at Sam's Club, and it's a six foot, and it was about 50 bucks, I think. Um, I need to do, I need to fix the quantum stylus. So that's why I've got these little knives laying there. I'll explain that in another video. Artwork 
compliments of Emma, who is my artist in the family. This is a work in progress. Behind it is my other dress form because I'm not sure exactly where I want to put these and they fit right there right now. And this is a cart that just has um, mostly design stuff in it, like graph paper and measuring tools and pencils and that kind of thing. The basket on the top is patterns that I want to make soon uh, or just need to put away. And over here I have the rest of the books. These are all books I have loved and wanted copies of. My Little Singer Featherweight. Um, thread. I have four boxes from Ikea that I keep lace, zips, bias, and elastics in. Uh, buttons. This wicker basket has patterns that need to be put away and also buttons underneath those. These are just little tape measure slash pin cushions that I have had for a long time and really love. This basket holds all my machine manuals and then I've got all my sewing books right here. Uh, let's see, these are extra boxes of patterns that I, obviously I ran out of space on my table and then more fabric down there. Over here I have my pattern notebooks which uh, serve as a little personal pattern catalog. And then on the bottom, I have uh, copies of my threads, magazines, and vintage patterns that I want to frame. And that box is full of blank envelopes for my patterns. And the table. Oh, let's talk about this table. This table is made from four bookcases that are the three cube closet made kind that you can get at Target or Walmart or a number of places. And they were previously on the wall in my other room. And so I knew I could make a table out of at least two of them. And then I decided all four would work even better. So I put them together and because they are just perfectly three feet across and 12 inches wide, this works out to be five feet exactly. So I got an old closet door at the Habitat for Humanity Restore and I cut it down and I trimmed it out and I put cork on the very top because Diane Dizelle, who is a incredible YouTuber and she talks about techniques of sewing and pattern making, she said in one of her videos about tools that in a professional pattern makers shop they always had metal tables with cork tops well I was just going to paint this and then I realized I could get cork and put on top of it so I did I got cork a big roll of it and I glued it on and then I sanded it a little bit and then I finished it with some polyurethane and then some spray lacquer because the polyurethane went in there because cork sucks everything up and then I put the trim on. I was only gonna put this trim, but then it worked out better if I put this trim on. And the reason I finished the top of the cork was because I wanted to be able to easily pull over uh, delicate fabrics and have them not catch on anything. I have two yardsticks on here. One is from the bank where, um, it, from the town where I grew up. I like how big the numbers are. And then the other one is metric. It was a, um, a yardstick that has imperial on one side and metric on the other. And um, it was from Sofro and House of Fabrics, both of which I worked at many, many years ago. All I have here is just my cutting mat and weights and scissors and pins in a little tray that my Emma Bug made for me many years, many, many years ago. And it is just the cutest little thing. It needs magnets on the bottom so that I can uh, contain all these pins. But, uh, and the ever important earbuds, these are made by M Pow, and they are fantastic. And a coaster, which I probably don't need because I've got cork. 
The most amazing thing about this table is how high it is. I'm five foot seven and it hits me right at about my waist. So I don't really have to bend over to do anything. I can cut, I can trace, I can do all kinds of things. The reason it's so high is because I added wheels and then a base to put the wheels on on the bottom of the bookshelves and then the table is about an inch and a half high and it is trimmed out. So I ended up adding quite a bit of height to the actual three feet. So I have about 42 inches, a little less than that, of height here for this table. So you can see why it's so amazing. I never have to bend over. It is so great. I love that. So that is this amazing, amazing room. I could not be happier about it. And I've been in here sewing for, uh, you know, a couple, three, four things. You know, you go whole hog. My husband came in the other day and said, you really love this room. And I said, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm in prison. <laughs> Except that I come in here every available moment that I can because it's just such an amazing creative space. This is not a big room. There is very little space between the table and the bookshelves. So, um, you know, you can't really move around a lot. It's not more space than, than would accommodate probably one person. But I love it and it's perfect for what I needed. So the last thing I wanted to tell you is that I have sewed in all kinds of spaces in my life. There were times when I had only the space uh, that I could use uh, with a cabinet and my old FAF 262 on a wall in a bedroom. There was no space. I cut things out on the bed, on the floor, on the carpet, anywhere that I could find. Um, I have had to sew on dining room tables, kitchen tables, get it all out and put it all away. And then I've had spaces like this where um, I've had a room with uh, a table. At one point I had this fabulous um, kind of kitchenette area in a mother-in-law suite in a house that we rented but I don't know that it's ever been this custom. And so I want to tell you that because this is not an expensive, fancy schmancy kind of thing. I did most of this myself and it cost a whole lot less than it would have cost had I had it done. So you can sew anywhere. It's, you can sew anywhere, but when you've been sewing a lot of years and you have a lot of stuff and your kids have all left home, um, it's possible to have a really nice space like this, especially if you have a little bit of imagination. So even though I have less space than I had in the other room, I think it's space that's better used, more efficiently used, and I love it. So let me know what you think of it and I will uh, post a video about the process, the woodworking process the agonizing stuff that I had to go through because, oh my goodness, yeah, it wasn't that bad actually. And I'm so happy that I don't even care anymore. So yeah, let me know what you think. And I think that's it for now for me. So I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.